Hi, welcome back. John here with Volvac Publishing again. Um, as you see, I didn't change my sweatshirt. We're shooting all these videos in a series, or at least this portion of it. And yes, I'm a Miami Dolphin fan. I won't even apologize for that. You're just going to have to deal with it. We were talking about, in previous videos, we were talking about open syllables, closed syllables, and that magic E, that ninja E. We're going to talk about vowel teams. We want to get into this part of it right here. Uh, vowel teams, by definition, are very simply two or more letters together that make one sound. Again, on page 54 in your handbook of teacher tips, talks a little bit about that. So again, if you have that resource, refer to it. But vowel teams are relatively easy to identify. We teach in VOAC that there are regular vowel teams and there are irregular vowel teams. We cover all of that. We spend a lot of time on that. So I'm not going to beat that up. We do cover that. But a vowel team, for example, uh, might be a word that looks like this. Made. Or it could be the word uh, boy. Or it could be the word um, boat. So they're easy to identify the letters in the word. To clover mark this, very simply put an elongated V underneath the letters that make up the one sound. And you're going to have longer words such as the word taught, the aw sound. These are the letters that make up that sound. So we don't, uh, we don't do this, and I, and I want to stress this. So if you had, we'll go back to this made. Okay. We don't do this. And the reason we don't is because it promotes that catchy little phrase, when two vowels go walking, the first one does the talking. And that's cute. Kids, kids learn that, they, rem they memorize that, and it's easy to use. The problem with that particular catchphrase is it only holds true for about 26, 27 percent of the English language. So I ask you, if, if your kids are functioning at 26 or 27 percent, are you happy? Well, obviously the answer should be no. And so, if you're not happy then with functioning at 26, 27% accuracy, then why are you using a rule that only gives you 26 or 27%? So you need to change that up a little bit. Um, this basically is, it promotes that, so we kind of stay away from that, and we just spend a lot of times dealing with vowel teams. Just to, to show you this, and I have a graphic, if you want that, you can contact me at, vo at, w w no, at uh, our email, voac at voac.com, and I'll, and I'll send you the graphic for it. And I, I'm not going to put it here because it's kind of long and drawn out. But basically, we took Fry's list of 1,000 most frequently used words. And if you're not familiar with Fry's list, you can Google that and find that. But we applied Clover to all of those words. And, and, and all of the clover part of things. But we applied clover to all of those words. And what we found is that by using clover, we were able to decode those first thousand words accurately by about 80% on the average, 70 to 80% average. Now, are you happy with your kids functioning at 70%, 80%? No, not totally, but I'm a whole lot happier with 70 or 80% than I am at 25 or 26, 27%. So you, you kind of have to see where your losses are at. Uh, at, at 70 or 80%, I have far fewer rungs on the ladder to climb to get to the top. So you have to keep that in mind. Uh, but this is vowel teams. Again, real easy marking for it. Um, that's the fifth, sorry, one, two, three. That's the fourth most frequently used vowel pattern in the English language. Again, we teach these in the order and frequency in which they're used as the language is developed. That's ball teams. Practice some of this. You'll be on top of your game. Thanks for playing. See you next time.